Look at this. This is a Scots pine tree. Normally this species lives for 150 years, exceptionally 300, but we think that this tree might be 400 years old. It truly is a living monument. It's a great part of our heritage and it has a haunting beauty. It's cragged bark here and it's beautiful smoky blue foliage. And if this thing's more than 400 years old, it was living when there were wolves howling in this forest. But not only that, it's fundamentally important as the primal building block in one of the UK's most exciting and important ecosystems, the Caledonian forest. What a thing, look at that, honestly, that's a tree. Scots pine has got a wide global distribution. It grows in Spain, all the way up through Europe, right across the top of Siberia. But what was unique when the ice retreated from the UK after the last ice age is that it was the only conifer growing here. And in our peculiar oceanic climate, that gave birth to the mythical Great Wood of Caledon, the Caledonian forest. But boy, did we abuse this habitat. As soon as the Vikings arrived, they started burning it down. Things got much worse in the 16th and 17th century. We ran out of wood in England and in lowland Scotland. And so they came up here and started cutting all of this down to fuel the Industrial Revolution. It still got worse. Between the wars, we imported Canadian lumbermen and they virtually felled a Speyside. And then, perhaps saddest of all, between 1960 and 1990, when many of us were alive, 50% of what remained was cut down and destroyed. What remains? Well, what remains is 17,000 hectares, 37 blocks of this unique environment, some as small as just 150 trees. But they are absolute jewels in our landscape, and they support a remarkable collection of life. Perhaps the most exciting bird that lives in Caledonian forest is the remarkable capercaillie. What's their link with the trees? Well, quite simply that they feed on the freshly growing shoots at the tips of the branches. Another specialist of the Caledonian forest is the crested tit. In the case of this species, it's not about finding its food here, but its nesting habitat. You see, it needs standing dead pines that are well rotted so that it can excavate its nesting burrow into those. In fact, it's such a specialist of this woodland that if you want to see a crested tit, you've got to come here to the Caledonian forest. They really are a bird of this wonderful woodland. Well, those are the bird specialists. What about the mammals? Well, you might think of pine marten and wildcat, and certainly they do occur here, but they're not dependent directly on the pine trees, but there is a species that is, and of course, it's the red squirrel. And they really are a Scots pine cone specialist. You see, they're lighter than greys, and as a consequence of that, they can reach right to the ends of the branches to nibble these things off, and then get the rich rewards from the seeds that are inside here. The Caledonian forest isn't just a gathering of beautiful old trees, it's a complex association of all of the species that live here. But they are dependent upon those trees, these craggy old survivors, showing such great courage to make a last stand here. So what of the future? Well, there are plenty of problems. 
This area was overstocked with sheep for a long time, which prevented regeneration. These days, there are in many places too many deer. Also, they're not the fires there used to be, and fire was implicitly important when it came to maintaining these forests. It burned away all of the ground level so that the little saplings could find their way up through into the light. But you know, I'm very optimistic because we understand these processes, and if we understand them, then we can manage them. And look, regeneration is taking place. Perhaps these trees, these very trees, are the Caledonian forest of tomorrow, and long may it prosper. <laughs>